wait two weeks, Florida's going to be next. Just like Italy, wait two weeks. Well, hell, we're eight weeks away from that, and it hasn't happened. That's Ron DeSantis. He's a 46th governor of Florida and a close ally to President Trump. During the coronavirus pandemic, he declared a state of emergency in Florida, which helped secure federal funding approved by Trump himself. But initially, DeSantis refused to shut the state down. So who is he? I'm comedian Yudoye Travis, and this is the story of Ron DeSantis. Ronald Dion DeSantis was born in 1978 in Jacksonville, Florida. In 1991, DeSantis was a pitcher and third baseman on a little league team that went all the way to the Little League World Series. The team lost, but DeSantis was good enough to keep playing. He attended the elite Ivy School, Yale, where he was a four-year starter on the baseball team. During his senior year, he was captain of the team and batted 336 from the plate, which, although the competition wasn't nearly as tough, is technically better than Sammy Sosa's best year. DeSantis graduated in 2001. He left the diamond for good and attended Harvard Law. During his stint at yet another elite Ivy school, he received his reserve naval officer's commission with an assignment to the Judge Advocate General's Corps, or JAG. The next year in 2005, he finished Naval Justice School and was assigned to a station in Florida as a prosecutor for Jack. He graduated from Harvard around the same time. At Guantanamo Bay, DeSantis' job was to advocate for the fair and humane treatment of the detainees and to make sure the U.S. military complied with the law. The Christmas of 2006, I wasn't home with my family. I was in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba at the terrorist detention facility, not as a detainee, as an officer. <laughs> but it's unclear how good DeSantis was at his job of making sure detainees were treated humanely because, of course, the U.S. military has been accused of torture, violating international law, and mass human rights abuses in their detention center in Guantanamo Bay. Many of the detainees held there have not even been charged with a crime, and some of the prisoners have been cleared for transfer yet still remain imprisoned. Ron DeSantis, Iraq War veteran, JAG officer, who dealt with terrorists in Guantanamo Bay. In 2007, DeSantis went to Iraq, serving as a legal advisor to SEAL Team 1. He was awarded a Bronze Star for his service and received an honorable discharge in 2010. A few years later, in 2012, DeSantis announced he was running for a congressional seat in Florida's 6th District. He won the race by a landslide. In the House, DeSantis signed a pledge, backed by fossil fuel profit-obsessed billionaires, the Koch brothers, vowing to vote against any global warming legislation that would raise taxes. DeSantis was re-elected two more times in 2014 and 2016. During his time in the House, he became a founding member of the Freedom Caucus, the far-right group within the House which advocates for extreme conservative legislation. He also spoke about super important issues on Fox News frequently, like Beyonce and Jay-Z taking a trip to Cuba. It's not really an educational trip if you're going there on a wedding anniversary. That's basically just pure tourism. In 2016, DeSantis ran for Senate after Marco Rubio announced his bid for the presidency. But after Rubio's failed campaign, DeSantis withdrew from the running and focused on getting re-elected to the House. In 2018, after Trump tweeted that DeSantis is a brilliant young leader who would make a great governor, the former baseball star announced his candidacy to succeed the unfinished escaped AI from Westworld, Rick Scott. Well, as you remember, a few weeks ago, the president tweeted support for me as a candidate for governor of Florida. So today we're going to uh, be filing the paperwork uh, to begin that uh, effort. During the Republican primary, DeSantis leaned heavily into Trump's endorsement. Ron loves playing with the kids. Build the wall. He reads stories. Then Mr. Trump said, you're fired. I love that part. He's teaching Madison to talk. Make America great again. On August 28, 2018, DeSantis was named the Republican nominee for governor. He'd go up against the Democratic Tallahassee mayor, Andrew Gillum, in the general, who would have been Florida's first black governor. The race was heated from the start, and just mere hours after the primary results, DeSantis made a racially charged comment against Gillum, obviously. The last thing we need to do is to monkey this up by trying to embrace a socialist agenda. After the interview, a Fox News host made an announcement on behalf of the company saying on air, we do not condone this language, which says a lot coming from Fox News. Soon after DeSantis' racial slur, his association with racism was brought to the forefront. The Washington Post reported, DeSantis spoke four times at conferences organized by conservative activist David Horowitz, who has said that African Americans owe their freedom to white people and that the country only serious race war is against whites. DeSantis praised the work of Horowitz in a speech saying, David has done such great work. I've been to these conferences in the past, but I've been a big admirer of an organization that shoots straight, tells the American people the truth, and is standing up for the right thing. DeSantis was also criticized for taking a donation from someone who once called President Obama a Muslim 
on Twitter. The DeSantis campaign condemned the comment, but he didn't return the money. But what do you say to Florida voters who have concerns about your keeping the money from that contributor, your comments, and about your tolerance? Because he made a mistake, he apologized. Um. But the donor, who has contributed at least $22,920 to DeSantis' campaigns over the years, didn't apologize. In fact, he defended his racist comments, saying, so somebody like Chris Rock can get up on stage and use the word and there's no problem? But some white guy says it and he's racist? Really? Gillum called DeSantis out on all of it. Now, I'm not calling Mr. DeSantis a racist. I'm simply saying the racists believe he's a racist. Despite his close association to racists and spewing rhetoric that pleased them, DeSantis initially won the race by a count of 100,000 votes. Gillum conceded, but he took back his concession as late counted ballots poured in, bringing the race within a margin of 0.4%. A recount was triggered, but three counties missed the recount deadline and it wasn't extended. DeSantis was named the winner with at least 584,000 ballots left left out. The next gubernatorial election in Florida will take place in 2022, but until then, keep your eye on this elite Ivy League school educated former Guantanamo Bay based lawyer who loves accepting campaign donations from folks who tweet out the n-word, Ron DeSantis. Hey, thanks for watching Who Is? Did you know we have a podcast now too? On Who Is? The podcast? I'll dive deep into the fascinating lives of the people who run things, whose decisions impact every aspect of our lives. How did they get where they are today? And knowing that, what might they do next? From politicians to the ultra rich, to military contractors and monarchs and media moguls, I'll introduce you to the reporters and experts who know these real life world molders best sharp-eyed observers and confidants who observe our subjects as they make the decisions that define our everyday lives. To see more, hit the link or search Who Is on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. And for more of the video series you know and love, be sure to check out the Snapchat versions and our series playlists on YouTube and Facebook.